Hey, what's up, family and friends? Uh, this is coming at you with chapter two, part two. I uh, want to just finish where we left off in the last video, so I'm gonna jump right into it. We were in the diet myths. I did one to five in the last video. Now I'm doing six to ten. So jumping straight into it. Diet myth number six: Everything natural is good for you. This is one of my favorites. Fruits have more in common with candy than vegetables. <gasps> Big shocker, right? We always hear about fruits and veggies as a one thing, as, but it's really, they're not really in common because fruits are primarily made with sugar and water with a little bit of fiber when you eat it, like with the skin, not when you juice it or anything. The fiber gets removed completely. But veggies are actually low in sugar, very high in nutrients. And once again, we're going to get into leptin because your liver converts fructose to either glucose or triglycerides. Or triglycerides, as we've spoken about before, store fat. Fruits also do not suppress you, your appetite the way proteins and fats do. So you end up over consuming it than more than any other kind of sugar. Think like grapes. You know, when you start eating grapes, you can't stop picking at it, right? Um, eating fructose can actually contribute to heart disease and damage arteries because of the elevated increase in um, I use elevated increase the same word, elevated triglycerides. Fructose also links to proteins like collagen and creates toxic, toxic advanced glycogen end products or a AGEs for sure. We can call them ages. Ages are major major cause of skin wrinkles and age your arteries. They can also lead to osteocirrhosis. And we have the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO. The bad bacteria that loves fructose creates uric acid and then when too much builds up it can actually cause kidney stone and have little piece, crystallized pieces flowing around in your bloodstream. Um, and in the Bulletproof Diet, it says not to completely remove it, but to limit the amount of sugar you eat to about 25 grams or less a day. That's about, if you're looking at it, two apples. It's not a lot, but it's better than feeling hungry and you constantly overeating all this sugar. Diamond number seven is you have to work out to lose weight. Now, if you eat a tons of fat, your body will efficiently metabolize fat for energy instead of storing it. Um, the great misconception of weight loss is that burning calories is relevant, relevant to losing pounds and slimming down. But did you know that overtraining can actually make you gain weight? That's pretty counterproductive, isn't it? And why is that? Because your body responds to rigorous exercise as it does with any other stressor by increasing cortisol levels in the body. Now you know cortisol is a hormone that control, increases blood sugar, suppresses the immune system, and even decreases bone, bone formation. Now don't say, oh, I don't have to work out, I just have to follow. No, not that, because um, moving is still a big part. It's still great for your nervous system, your brain, and your detox system moving around. You sh instead of doing long workouts seven days a week, like most of the guys that I know, they go to the gym every day, they have to go to the gym, oh, I need to go to the fucking gym, da da da. No. Instead, you should be doing small amounts of vigorous exercises per week. Um, as he talks about later, one of them is like basically a 15, you go out to run 15 minutes. You sprint 30 seconds, rest 90. Sprint 30 seconds, rest 90. Sprint 30 seconds for 15 minutes. And he says that's equivalent to a person that does a daily jog for an hour, which is pretty intense and look how much time you're saving but um so we're gonna go into diamond number eight diamond number eight is coffee is bad for you actually it depends on the kind of coffee you get coffee's high in toxins of course but in the end coffee still improves focus improves your memory recall and your performance other studies have shown it lowers the risk of strokes and diabetes it also contains large amounts of polyphenols like red wine and chocolate does. And we spoke about that in one of the other videos. Studies show that men who drink four more cups of coffee, they have 59% lower chance of prostate cancer recurrence. 
It has powerful thermogenic properties, meaning it stimulates fat loss and helps your body build muscle for suppressing a substance called mTOR, which we'll talk about in later. He, he goes more in detail later chapter. It's a, and it's a powerful antioxidant. Now, Bulletproof Coffee is a low toxin coffee with the right fats. It stomps hunger and cravings, lights up the brain, helps lose weight, build muscle, increases focus and performance without the negative effects of the moldy coffee. Now, I recently just ordered some Bulletproof Coffee. I'm going to um, test it out. I created a health journal. I'm basically going on how I feel with food. Sorry for the quick. And um, because I'm very serious about this. Um, hopefully some of you guys watch this and probably go the same route. So diet myth number nine is salt is hazardous is a hazardous substance. Now human beings cannot live without salt. I heard that when they did announce that that um let me just put this back that salt was bad and people started removing people started like having all sorts of messed up things going on people dying because we can't live without salt. You have to have the right amounts of your body because it is essential. Why is it essential? Because when you're when you're stressed, your adrenals make high levels of cortisol. When you're stressed, and your adrenal glands start pumping that out, they become fatigued and cannot produce important hormones, such as one that is called aldosterone. Sorry, I can't pronounce it. Which balances sodium and potassium levels in the body. The right amount of sodium intake should be about 2,500 to 6,000 milligrams a day. So, um. Yeah, I mean, only people with high blood pressure, just to point this out, only people with high blood pressure already shouldn't have salt because people with high blood pressure have salt, it increases the blood pressure. So they should look for alternatives and see a doctor. Because salt is not a reason for high blood pressure. Instead, it can be other factors such as too little bit of calcium, magnesium, or potassium. Just... Don't go for the table salt. Instead, go for something like sea salt, or he says the highest quality kind of sea salt you can get is called Him Himalayan pink sea salt. He explains in the book like why is it better and where it comes from. It's like crazy. And then finally, diet myth number 10. Moderation is the key to success when dieting. Every little thing that you put in your mouth affects your performance in some shape or form. So I know you always hear, oh, have a cheat day and you know, moderation is the way to go, you know, everything in moderation, right? Um, I have a friend who says this a lot, but just know that everything you do put in your mouth is, some things can last for days, like brain fog. I know that if you drink liquor, most of us, majority of us, you feel that brain fog for days, three days. So just know, be conscious of it, you know, there's nothing wrong with eating those bad kryptonite foods when you want it, you know, the, ch the chocolate cake and the, you know, the, the pasta and all this stuff. Nothing wrong with it. Just know that if you need to do something pretty big, like a huge project at work or you're working on your own business and you need to perform at your highest performance, that's why I'm doing this, um, you need to watch what you eat make sure you're eating the right kinds of things you know so just always be ready to face those consequences i hope this is the end of chapter two tomorrow i'm going to go into chapter three probably going to cut that up into two parts the chapters are pretty long so hopefully you're looking forward to it and um yeah see you later take care